Hello everyone, welcome back to Speed. Still, if you are not subscribed, then do it quickly by pressing the subscribe button and support me. And don't forget to check out my previous videos. Click on the i at the top. So let us begin. In this video, I'll be starting with Module 4, Environmental Pollution of Energy and Environment Subject. If you have not seen the previous modules, please click on the i at the top to watch those videos. So environmental pollution is a well-known topic and we'll see as per requirement of the syllabus in this module. So let us begin with the video. As I told previously, all these module videos contain complete notes which is required for this subject. So you can take the screenshots of the slides for your future reference. So in the contents we have types of pollution, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, marine and few pollutions. So under these pollution topics we have causes, effects and their controls. Then we have solid waste management and then we have few uh, what we say few ideas which an individual can follow to prevent pollution by himself. Then we have few case studies which are which have been a dangerous situation in the history caused due to pollution which is caused by humans. So let us continue with module 4. So let us begin with a brief introduction to environmental pollution. Pollution is the impact of undesirable changes in our surroundings that affect plants, creatures and individuals. Pollution is the introduction of contaminants into the natural atmosphere that causes instability, disorder and harm or discomfort to the ecosystem. Pollution can appear as chemical substance or energy such as noise, heat or light. So pollutions appearing in chemical substance are example carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide which cause air pollution and so on. And then we have noise, heat and light. Uh, light means radiation which is harmful to living beings. During the last few decades, we have contaminated air, water and land on which life itself depends with a variety of waste products. Pollutants include solid, liquid and gaseous substances present in greater than natural abundance produced due to human activity, which have the detrimental effect on our environment. The nature and the amount pollutants determines the severity of detrimental effects on human health. Even a small concentration of pollutants in the air becomes more significant in comparison to similar levels of present in food. Pollutants that enter water have the ability to spread to distant places, especially in the marine ecosystem. So the dif main difference between the humans and other animal beings is that the animal beings adopt to the nature, but humans make the nature to adopt to themselves. So by this way, humans have made lots of achievements by destroying the nature itself. So in order to protect our nature, we have to go through many procedures to protect them so for that reason first we have to understand where we are polluting and what are the causes and what are the effects so this is what we are going to learn in this module so this is about the brief introduction of environmental pollution so let us continue with the types of pollution types of pollution air pollution water pollution soil pollution marine pollution noise pollution and thermal pollution so these are the main types of pollution but there are many other pollutions such as radiation pollution and then we have nuclear pollution and so on but these are the main things so here we can see in the images that each images represent each type of a pollution first we have air pollution then he, this side we have noise pollution water pollution with the dolphin we can see how we are destroying the ocean species by throwing our plastics into the ocean then we have leakages of oils destroying the land which is causing soil pollution then we have heated water which is being discharged into water which makes the natural water hot and hence be uh, becomes a discomfort for the living beings which are there in the water so which is called a thermal pollution so in the further slides we will be looking into looking deep into the topics such as air pollution and all so let us continue So the first and the most dangerous type of pollution is air pollution. Air pollution occurs due to the presence of undesirable solid and gaseous particles in the air in quantities that are harmful to human health and environment. Air may get polluted by natural causes such as volcanoes which release ash, dust, sulphur and other gases. So here 
the quantity is more than the required in nature so we have carbon as a natural source in our air but when the quantity of the carbon increases then it's air pollution so let us see to the sources of air pollution pollutants that are emitted directly from identif identifiable sources are produced both by natural events and human activities these are called primary pollutants there are five primary pollutants that together contribute to the large extent of air pollution these are carbon oxides nitrogen oxides sulfur oxides volatile organic compounds and suspended particulate ma matter so these are the primary pollutants then we have secondary that is pollutants that are produced in the atmosphere when certain chemical reaction takes place among the primary pollutants which are called secondary pollutants so these are sulfuric acid nitric acid and carbonic acid so let us look into like uh, look into the next slide which will explain what are these in nature carbon monoxide which is a carbon oxide is a colorless odorless toxic produced when organic materials such as natural gas coal or wood are incompletely burnt vehicular exhaust are single largest source of carbon monoxide so when there is a incomplete combustion carbon monoxide is produced if there is a complete combustion then uh, there may be carbon dioxide which will be produced so then we have sulfur oxides sulfur oxides are produced when sulfur containing fossil fuels are burnt so we used to add sulfur to petrol which are as an additive but in recent days it is not allowed to add a sulfur so such kind of such things will produce sulfur oxides in nature then we have nitrogen oxide nitrogen oxides are found in vehicular exhaust nitrogen oxides are significant as they are involved in production of secondary air pollutants such as ozone so nitrogen oxides as we see in the hollywood movies nos is one of the uh, major pollutants of a then we have hydrocarbons simple words petroleum products and so on hydrocarbons as a compounds consisting of carbon and hydrogen atoms they either evaporate from fuel supplies or remnant of the fuel that did not burn completely hydrocarbons are washed out of the air when it is rains and runs into surface water they cause a oily film on the surface and react to form secondary pollutants so if you park a car some on uh, some dirty area uh, when it rains or the land or the land gets wet we can see that the shining or oily oil film on the surface which is caused due to the exhaust from the silencer of the vehicle particulates are small solid dispersed into atmosphere the effects of particulates range from soot to car carcinogenic effects as asbestos dust particles and ash from the industrial plants that are dispersed into atmosphere repeated exposure to particulates can cause them to accumulate in lungs and interfere with the ability to lungs to exchange gases so what is particulates it uh, this can be understood while i explain one of the case studies which caused the death lots of death due to these particulates mat matters so particulate matter is in simple words is a ash or a dirt particles which comes out from the what do we say exo uh, gas 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 pumps or gas exhausts of a factories then we have lead lead is a major air pollutant that remains largely and un unmonitored and is emitted directly into the atmosphere through vehicle exhaust so as we know lead is always poisonous so lead in air will be more poisonous if we breathe in the lead containing contained in the air previously we saw the particles which cause air pollution let us now see the effects of air pollution so on living organisms prolonged exposure to air pollutants can break the natural defenses of the body causing or contributing to diseases such as lung cancer asthma chronic bronchitis and emphysema chronic exposure causes a condition similar to bronchitis bronchitis something i don't know how to pronounce that it is bronchitis suspended particles aggravate bronchitis or asthma exposure to these particles over a long period of time damages lung tissue and contribute to the development of chronic respiratory diseases or cancer so as we know we cannot even breathe in a smoke for uh even for a small duration of time except for except for those who smoke 
but presence of those particles which are seen in the previous slide are very dangerous which can uh, damage the lung tissues and cause cancer then we have plants when some gaseous pollutants enter the leaf pores they damage the leaves of crops chronic exposure of the leaves to air pollutants can break down the waxy coating that helps prevent excessive water loss and leads to damage from disease pest and brought drought and for frost materials air pollutants break down exterior paints on cars and houses all around the world air, pol air pollutants have discolored the irreplaceable monuments historic buildings marble streets and etc so if you see in the images we can see taj mahal as a white beautiful thing but if you go there and see it's a dusty old building which is all because of the air pollution we saw the causes we saw the effects now we have to control so control measures air pollution can be controlled by two fundamental approaches preventive technique and effluent control so on the effective means of controlling air pollution is to have proper equipment in proper in required place this includes devices for removal of pollutants from the flue gases through scrubbers close collection recovery systems through which it is possible to collect the pollutants before they escape use of dry and wet collectors filters electrostatic precipitate etc providing a greater height to the stacks can help in facilitating the discharge of pollutants as far away from the ground as possible industry should be located in places so as to minimize the effects of pollution after considering the topography and wind direction so as we can see that the uh, as we can visualize there is a small pollution control thing which is implemented onto our motorcycles as per the BS6 norms that is a catalytic converter which produce uh, which reduces the amount of pollutants which is left out through the exhaust so this is one of the control measures and there are many control measures so just you can google it out the control measures for the prevention of air pollution we, you can see many topics so just try to make out any two to two to three points otherwise you can just go through write this entire para and you can score marks so this may be coming for only six marks or four marks with the other questions combined so next topic it water pollution water pollution is a contamination of water bodies example lakes rivers ocean aquifers and groundwater water pollution occurs when pollutants are directly or indirectly discharged into water bodies without adequate treatment to remove the harmful compounds so we are all we are the ones who are making the water pollution so then we are the ones who have to clean it so in simple words we know how it's being done so let us know how technically what's causing the water pollution causes of water pollution there are several classes of common water pollution pollutants these are diseases causing agents which include bacteria virus protozoa and parasitic worms that enter water from domestic sewage and untreated human and animal waste human waste contain bacteria large amount of human waste in water increases the number of these bacteria which causes gastrointestinal diseases the next category of water pollutants are oxygen depleting waste the organic waste that can be decomposed by aerobic bacteria large population of bacteria use up the oxygen present in the water to degrade this waste in the process this degraded this degrades the water quality there that is reducing the amount of oxygen contained in the water the amount of oxygen required for the breakdown of certain amount of organic matter is called biological oxygen demand the amount of bod in the water is a indicator of water level pollution so write this para completely if they ask cause of water due to reduced or reduced oxygen or bod explain bod then we have the third category of pollutants are uh, inorganic plant nutrients these are the waste soluble nitrates and phosphates that cause excessive growth of algae and other aquatic plants this may interfere with the use of water by clogging water intake pipes changing the taste and odor of the water and cause the build up of organic matter the fourth category of water soluble inorganic chemicals which are acids salts and compounds of toxic metals mercury and leads so due to, because of the mercury there has been an incident which is dangerous that is which is called mina mata something 
then the high levels of these chemicals can make the water unfit to drink harm fish and other aquatic life reduce crop yields and accelerate corrosion of the equi equipment that use this so first thing is because of the first top point is because of the human and other waste being discharged into water then second is presence of anaerobic aerobic bacteria which will consume all the oxygen present to decay thereby reducing the amount of oxygen in the water then the third kind is presence growth of algae and aquatic plants so from the land the fertilizers which are used for the plants will lead to the water there it will increase the growth of this algae which will produce water pollution then the fourth category is present dis uh, disposal of or the discharge of acid salts and other toxic materials into the water from the factories or other things so these are the four points note on the four points and try to write your own words for these four points effects of water pollution the main problem caused by water pollution is that it kills organisms that depend on these water bodies including humans pollution disrupts the natural food chain pollutants such as lead and cadmium are eaten by tiny fishes later these animals are consumed by the fish and food chain continues to be disrupted at higher levels ecosystem can be severely changed and destroyed by the water pollution groundwater contamination from pesticides cause damage within the wildlife and ecosystem sewage fertilizers and agricultural runoff contains organic materials that when discharged into the water increase the growth of algae which causes the depletion of oxygen that is bod low level of oxygen levels are not able to support most of the indigenous organisms in the area and therefore upset the natural ecological balance in the rivers and lakes drinking contaminated water causes skin rashes and health problems like cancer typhoid fever stomach sickness in humans water pollution causes flooding due to the accumulation of solid waste and soil erosion in streams and rivers oil spills in the water causes animals to die when they ingest it or encounter it oil does not dissolve in water so it causes suffocation in fish and birds so just note down all these points write it in point by point so at least write six points there is nothing to explain these are the direct points so at least write six points if they ask for 6 marks or if they ask for 8 marks they are not going to ask for 8 marks if they ask then try to write 8 correct points and then include to your own some normal okay okay points so try to make these complete parent to 8 points and write if they ask for 8 marks otherwise also they try to add two extra points of your own or simply repeat the points by changing the direction of flow of the sentence so control measures of water pollution the foremost necessity is the prevention setting up effluent treatment plants and treating the waste through these can reduce the pollution load in the recipient water the treated effluent can be reused for either gardening or cooling purposes whenever wherever possible use environmental friendly household products such as washing powder household cleaning agents etc excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers fertilizers should be avoided don't throw litter into the river lakes or ocean or dispose it at the design lakes and ocean there should be some different word not the design lakes and uh, ocean dispose it at the designated bins suspended solid particles or inorganic materials can be removed by use of filters use of biological filters and processes can naturally degrade the organic waste material so here also note down the points try to write the answer in points then you can score good marks so these are the direct answer try to read out the para once again soil pollution soil is a thin covering over a land consisting of a mixture of minerals organic materials living organisms and water that together support the growth of plant life soils vary in their content of clay slate and the gravel the relative amounts of different sizes and types of mineral particles determine soil texture soil erosion can be defined as the movement of surface litter and the top soil from one place to another while erosion is a natural process often caused by the wind and the flowing water it is greatly accelerated by human activities such as farming construction overgrazing livestock burning grass over the on grass cover and defo deforestation so in simple soil pollution is 
loss of fertile soil on the surface so right, read the para once again try to make these lines into points then you can write your own words in the exam so let us see the cause of soil pollution cause and effects of soil pollution loss of the topsoil makes the soil less fertile and reduces its water holding capacity the topsoil which is washed away also contributes to water pollution clogging lakes increasing turbidity of the water and also leads to the loss of aquatic life so industrial activity industrial activity has been the biggest contributor to the problem most industries are dependent on extracting minerals from the earth that is the mining whether it is iron or coal the by products are contaminated and they are not disposed in a manner that can be considered safe and makes it unsuitable for use agricultural activities chemical utilization has gone up tremendously since technology provided us with the modern pesticides and fertilizers they contain chemicals that are not produced in the nature and cannot be broken down by it hence it cannot be broken down by the nature as a result they seep into the ground after they are mixed with the water slowly reduce the fertility of the soil other chemicals damage the composition of the soil and make it easier to erode by water and air plants absorb many of these pesticides and when they decompose they cause soil pollution since they become part of the land so people think how pesticides and fertilizers are going to pollute the soil so for example if you have fever we will take fever medicine so we will become okay so similarly if they are growing pineapple they will put a pesticides to increase the growth of pineapple that's okay but what happens if while having a fever if we take a tablet for something else so it just worsens so similarly this thing happens when the pesticides are used for the growth once the growth is complete the plants are removed but the pesticides are still present in the soil so which makes the soil polluted so we have so therefore we have to reduce the use of pesticides then we have water disposal industrial waste is shown to cause contamination but there is another way in which we are adding to the pollution every human produces a certain amount of waste products by defecation while much of it moves into the sewer system there is also a large amount of that is dumped directly into the landfills even sewer system ends at landfills where the biological waste pollute the soil and the water this because of the bodies are full of toxins and chemicals which are now seeping into the land and causing pollution of the soil so note down this point so you can di directly write the para which is shown here then we have accidental oil spills oil leaks can happen during the storage and transportation of chemicals these oils can be seen at the most of the fuel stations the chemicals present in the fuel deteriorates the quality of the soil and makes them and suitable unsuitable for the cultivation it should not be and it should be unsuitable for the cultivation these chemicals can enter into the ground water through the soil and make the water unsafe for the consumption so we can see this in the image which is shown in the beginning then we have acid rain acid rain is caused when the pollutants present in the air mix up with the rain and returns on the ground the polluted air could dissolve away some of the important nutrients found in the soil and change the structure of the soil so this is dangerous for the plants also so the forest turns red when there is an acid rain so let us look into the control measures control measures of soil pollution it is essential that proper soil conservation measures are used to minimize the loss of soil there are several techniques that can protect the soil from erosion the most commonly employed methods include the two type treatments that are generally used area treatment which involves treating the land drainage line treatment which involves the treating of natural water courses continuous contour trenches can be used to enhance the infiltration of water reduce the runoff and check the soil erosion it involves shallow trenches dug across the slope of the land along the contour lines basically and the purpose of the soil water conservation they are most effective on gentle slope and in the areas of low medium rainfall live check dams which was created by planting grass shrubs and trees across the this should not be a girl there should be some word is can be across the soil can be used for this purpose it should not be a girl a bun constructed out of the stones across the stream can also be used for conserving soil and water 
so there is some mistake because of the auto correction of the keypad so sorry for that it's not purposefully done so sorry so i will try to put the actual word below okay it should be gullies not girls so make that correction while reading sorry for the mistake so let us continue next top is uh, next topic is marine pollution so this is a type of a pollution which most of us not see eventually but still it is one of the most dangerous pollution because marine is the biggest source and the home of species marine pollution it is defined as the discharge of waste substances into the sea resulting in harm of living being living resources hazard to human health hindrance to fishery and impairment of quality for use of sea water Marine pollution is associated with the changes in physical, chemical, and biological condition of seawater. So, let us see the causes and the effects. Causes of marine pollution. First cause is human beings. So, let us see the technical causes. The most obvious inputs, obvious inputs of waste are through the pipes directly discharging waste into the sea. Municipal waste and sewage from the residences and hotels in coastal towns are directly discharged into the sea. Pesticides and fertilizers from the agriculture which are washed off the land by the rain enter the water sources and eventually reach the sea. Petroleum and oils washed off from the roads enter the sewer system and st storm water overflows. These materials are carried into the rivers and eventually into the seas. Ship accidents and accidental spillage of the spillage at the sea can be very damaging to the marine environment. They may contain heavy metals and other contaminants are often dumped out to the sea. Offshore oil exploration and extraction also pollute the sea water to large extent. So these are the causes of marine pollution. Main cause is the human beings. Then whatever we do is a cause of marine pollution. So simply note down these points. Try to write them in the exam. Effects of marine pollution. Apart from causing eutrophication of large amount of organic waste can also result in development of red tides many important commercially important marine species are also killed due to the clogging of gills and other structures oil slicks slicks damage oil leaks damage marine life to a large extent salt wash marshes mangrove swabs are likely to trap oil and the plants which form basis of this ecosystem will suffer so this is the effects of marine pollution for more that you can Google it out so you can get point wise information which you can write in the exam or you can try to write your own words as you know what does the what is the marine pollution how it's going to affect you. Control measures of marine pollution. There is a lot to read so just take a screenshot of this slide and try to read in your free. So here just I'll read out. Reducing the pollution load on marine water is through the introduction of sewage treatment plants. This will reduce the biological oxygen demand of the final product before it is discharged to the receiving water. Primary treatment. These treatment, treatment plants use physical processes such as screening and sedimentation to remove the pollutants that will settle, float or too large to pass through the simple screening devices. After screening the waste water passes into the grid chamber. The deterioration time is chosen and to be long enough to allow lighter organic materials to settle from the grid chamber the sewage passes into the primary settling tank where the flow speed is reduced sufficiently to allow the most of the suspended solids to settle down by gravity if the waste is to undergo only primary treatment it is then chlorinated to destroy the bacteria and control areas after which the plant is released secondary treatment the main objective of the secondary treatment is to remove the most of the BOD. There are three commonly used approaches, trickling filter, activated sludge process and oxidation ponds. So for more information about this, you can just simply Google out or you can write whatever is here. That's enough for the exam. Trickling filter consists of rotating distribution arm that sprays liquid water, waste water over a circular bed of fish sized rocks and other coarse materials. The spaces between the rocks allow air to circulate easily so that the aerobic condition can be Maintain. The individual rocks in the bed are converted with a layer, covered with a layer of slime which consists of bacteria, fungi, algae, etc. which degrade the waste trickling through the bed. In activated sludge process, the sewage is pumped into the large tank and mixed for several hours with the bacteria-rich sludge and air bubbles 
to fa facilitate degradation of microorganisms. The water then goes into the sedimentation tank where most of the microorganisms settle as a sludge. Then we have oxidation ponds are large hollow ponds approximately 1 to 2 meters deep where raw or partially treated sewage is decomposed by microorganisms. So this complete slide is very important so take this screenshot try to write this entire slide directly in, onto your answer sheets without copying just read by heart whatever you do this is perfectly correct and write this only and you will get a marks. So let me continue with the next slide. Noise pollution is one of the pollution which we are doing daily. Noise is a undesirable unwanted sound. Noise may not seem as harmful as the contamination of air or water but it is a pollution problem that affects human health and can contribute to general deterioration of environmental quality. Causes of noise pollution There are several sources of noise pollution that contribute to both indoor and outdoor noise pollution. Noise emanating from the factories, vehicles, playing so loudspeaker during the various festivals can contribute to Outdoor noise pollution while loudly played radio and music system and other electronic gadgets can contribute to indoor noise pollution. So noise pollution is a pollution of pleasant environment by providing or producing undesirable sound or a very loud sound which just irritates us. Effects of noise pollution Physical health Most directly harmful effect or excessive noise is the physical damage to the ear not the car ear and temporary or permanent hearing loss below a sound level of 80 db a hearing loss does not occur at all however temporary effects are noticed at sound levels between 80 to 130 db a sound level of 150 db or more or more can physically rupture the ear drum the degree of hearing loss depends on the duration as well as the intensity of the noise. In addition to hearing losses, excessive sound levels can cause harmful effects on circulatory system, raising blood pressure and altering pulse rates. Then we have the mental health. Noise can also cause emotional and psychological effects such as irritability, anxiety and stress. Lack of concentration and mental fatigue are significant health effects of noise. So noise pollution is not a very important topic but if they ask then it means they are going to give you marks so write your own words and try to get the get the marks whatever is given in the exam paper. Control measures of noise pollution. There are four fundamental ways in which noise can be controlled. Reduce the noise at the source, block the path of the noise, increase the path length and protect the recipient. In general, the best control method is to reduce the noise levels at the source. Source reduction can be done effectively muffling vehicles and machinery to reduce the noise. In industries, noise reduction can be done by using rigid seals enclosed just around the machinery lined with the acoustic absorbing materials. Another best method to noise reduction is regular and thorough maintenance of operating machinery. Noise levels at construction sites can be controlled by using for construction planning and scheduling techniques so so this is simply about the noise pollution control so you can write your own words as i told noise pollution if topic comes that means they are want to give you marks so write whatever you have but write in a sensible manner next topic is thermal pollution Thermal pollution is the act of altering the temperature of natural water body which may be a river, lake or an ocean environment. Definition: The discharge of warm water into a river is usually called thermal pollution. So in simple, uh, the factories which use water for the cooling purpose discharge the heated water into the rivers by which the water in the river becomes hot and it is not comfortable for the or not suited for the species which are there in the water. Causes of thermal pollution It occurs when an industry removes water from a source, uses the water for cooling purposes and then returns the heated water to its source. Power plants heat water to convert it into a stream to drive a turbines that generate electricity. The steam is condensed into a water after it leaves the turbine. This condensation is done by taking a water from a water body to absorb the heat. This heated water is discharged back into the water body. This condition chiefly arises from the waste heat generated by an industrial process such as power generation plants. 
There can be a significant environmental consequences of thermal pollution with respect to surface receiving water such as river and lakes. In particular, decrease in biodiversity and creation of an environment hospitable to alien aquatic species may occur. That means the generation of bacteria or other disease causing species. So this whatever there in this para is enough for you to write in the exam. So just read it once again and you will understand what is the meaning of thermal pollution. And one more important thing is that we should not be confused thermal pollution with uh, what we say heat pollution or increase in temperature because of sun all those things. Thermal pollution is discharging pollution of water by discharging heat into the water. Effects of thermal pollution. The warmer temperature decreases the solubility of oxygen and increases metabolism of fish. This changes the ecological balance of the river. Sudden changes in temperature caused by periodic plant shutdowns, both planned and unintentional, can change result in death of these fish that are now adopted to live in water warm, warmer water. That is, when the water wa water becomes uh, had been made warm by the humans, the fishes have been adopted to live in the warm water. But if the plant has been shut down, then the water cools rapidly, so the fishes now take will take time to adopt to the new environment new environmental so there may be a death due to the decrease in the dissolved oxygen levels there is a suffocation of plants and animal species which created anaerobic conditions the sudden change in temperature causes harm to aquatic organization organisms the heated water is used for irrigation purpose to extend plant growing seasons control measures of thermal pollution thermal pollution can be controlled by passing the heated water through a cooling pond or cooling tower after it leaves the condenser. The heat is dissipated into the air and the water can then be discharged the river or pumped back to the plant for reuse as a cooling water. One method is to construct a large shallow pond. Hot water is pumped into one end of the pond and cooler water is removed from the other end. The heat gets dissipated from pond into atmosphere. The second method is to use cooling tower. Here water coming from condenser is sprayed down over a vertical sheets or baffles due to the water's flow in the due baffles the waters flow in these thin films. Cool air enters the tower through the water inlet that encircles the base of the tower and rises upwards causing the evaporative cooling. The waste is, is dissipated into atmosphere about 100 meters above the base of the tower. The cold water is collected at the floor of the tower and recycled back to the power con plant. Con so, as you heard here, this is uh, this is about the cooling ponds in the factories. So, you have learned this about this in other subjects such as energy and energy. Not this and uh, that, not this energy and environment, but in the other subject that is something energy. So that is the cool cooling ponds working for the reduction or re removal of the heated water using cooling ponds. So instead of letting it to the water and making thermal pollution. So let us look into the next topic. Next topic is solid waste management. There will be a one show question, question from this topic. So what is solid waste? So waste which is not going to change by it, change its shape, maybe such as a piece of a metal or a piece of a wood is known as solid waste. Waste which is non-effective or comes from city, town, village as a domestic or biomedical waste is termed as solid waste. The process of transportation, storage, collection and processing of solid waste in a, in a protective and economic manner is termed as solid waste management. Nature of the problem. Solid waste management is a civic problem and it has to evolve optimally and continuously to serve the future generation. Solid waste, if unchecked, can not only be health hazard but will impart multi-dimensional multi threats. A complete and environmentally sound solid waste management requires effective contribution from all of those who are involved in this problem. Everyone is involved in solid waste generation problem, so everyone should be involved in proper disposal of it. So, even as we know, we have to separate dry waste and wet waste in our homes it is also a part of solid waste management so let us look into more deep solid waste management techniques an integrated waste management strategy includes three main concepts source reduction recycling 
and disposal. Source reduction is one of the most fundamental ways to re reduce waste. This can be done by using less material when making a product, reuse of a product on site, designing products or packaging to reduce their quantity. So that is about reusing or source reduction. Then we have is recycling. Recycling is reusing some components of the waste that may be have some economic value. Recycling has readily visible benefits such as conservation of resources, reduction of energy used during the manufacture and reducing pollution levels. Then we have disposal of solid waste. So disposal of solid waste is done most commonly through sanitary landfills or through incinerations. A modern sanitary landfill is a depression in an impayable soil layer that is lined with an impayable membrane. Even through landfilling is an economic alteration for solid waste disposal. It has become increasingly difficult to find a suitable landfilling sites that are within economic hauling distance and very often citizens do not want landfills in their vicinity. So as the people's population is rising, the people are spreading across lots of areas. So finding the land to dispose all this material is difficult. Uh, as this will produce a discomfort for the people who are there in the locality. Disposal methods include incineration and vermicomposting. So incineration is a process of burning municipal solid waste in a properly designed furnace under a suitable temperature and operating conditions. Incineration is a chemical process in which the combustible portion of the waste is combined with oxygen forming carbon dioxide and water which are released into the atmosphere. However, extensive air pollution control equipment and high level technical supervision and skilled employees for proper operation and maintenance is required. So this is about insulation, in simple words burning the solid waste. Then we have vermicomposting. Vermicomposting involves collection of dead and dry leaves and twigs to decompose or and are broken down by organisms such as worms and insects and is finally broken down by bacteria and fungi. Fungi form a dark rich soil like material called compost. These organisms in the soil use the organic material as food which provides them the nutrients for their growth and activities. These nutrients are returned to the soil to be used again by trees and other plants. This process re recycles nutrients in nature. This soil can be used as a manure forms and gardens for farms and gardens. So this part is only for the biodegradable material so hence vermicomposting is but good for so also decomposition is also recycling. Role of an individual in prevention of pollution. So these points I am not going to explain because these are the common sense for every that everyone should have. So I request you to read all these points and to write your understand then write down your own in the exam. So keep on reading. Last topic of this module is few pollution case studies. So these are the few uh, tra tragedies which have happened in the past. So there are lots of videos explaining deeply about these. So at least for the interest just go through all these topics. So one among them is uh, Chernobyl and also about Bhopal there are movies and series. So just go through them. They are awesome. In exam, most probably there will be a question on case study. So you can write any one of them or if they ask particularly anyone, you can skip or if you are interested or, and if you know the well, then you, have to, you can write. So the most important things in this is the, the dates and the places. So these are the important. Then other than that, you can write, write in your own words. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any suggestion, please write it in the comment section. And I will be meeting you in the next video that is module 5 of the same subject. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel.